Hello there, welcome back. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Oberth class science vessel, one of Starfleet's most ubiquitous and sometimes infamous starships, but for all the wrong reasons. But does it deserve such a bad reputation? That's what we're going to look at today. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and also check out in the description box all of my different social media links, Instagram, etc. And the various other channels that I have got franchised with this one. Check them out, maybe you'll like them. And with that said, the Oberth class. The Starfleet Flying Coffin. Sometimes, maybe. So let's delve into the background of this class of starship. The Oberth class was first seen in the 2280s, although we can assume the vessel had been around a little bit longer than that. It was of the refit Constitution class era aesthetic. Vessels such as the USS Grissom would earn infamy for being easily destroyed by accident via a lucky shot from a Klingon Borel class bird of prey, a ship that ordinarily would not be a threat to most Federation starships. There were, as I said, likely earlier iterations, but we don't have much on those in main canon. The vessel class would continue in service, serving the Federation and Starfleet proudly, way up until the late 24th century and even beyond. The ship was predominantly a science vessel, but they were also used as a scout craft, transport, as well as to be refitted or built to slight varying configurations with a fairly modular design, particularly that lower engineering hull that could be swapped out and changed, to be couriers and to be light cargo ships. The sort of unusual hull configuration in the vessel is one of its biggest arguments against it. Many people arguing that the there is no obvious connect between the main body of the ship, where the nacelles, the bridge, and other systems are, to the engineering hull, which is suspended on a catamaran below the ship. Now, there are easy in-universe explanations. This most obvious one is they simply use transporters to move between the decks, but that is unlikely, but not beyond possibility. By the 23rd century, transporters are incredibly safe pieces of technology, but nonetheless, there would still be manual access. If you actually look at the sheer thickness of those pylons, it's easy to assume that a small section of it could have been, well, would have to be, to be honest, sectioned off to allow turbo lift shaft eggs entrance, if not at least a small crawlway to get between the various decks of the ship. It's unlikely there's anything in those pylons other than the means of getting from the top to the bottom of the ship. But there you go, it's not exactly hard to explain. The vessel could carry shuttlecraft and work bees, although it wouldn't carry very many of them. It was only a small ship. Now, a lot's made about how easy to destroy this vessel is, which is something we will discuss now. In its stock form, the Oberth class science vessel, and there's an important part in its description there, was armed only with a single low yield particle phase cannon, or later phaser. The variants of the ship, upgun versions, did exist that were more heavily armed with more phasers and even photon torpedoes, but this was still not the norm. This was either an afterthought where Starfleet would refit the vessels, but they did have the potential to be built from scratch with these in place, weapons emplacements in place. But they typically weren't for the simple reason of they were a science vessel. And if we accept Starfleet at face value for what it is, and Starfleet often touts, as Picard will always say, Starfleet is not a military organization. And to be fair, I don't think it is. I don't think, strictly speaking, Starfleet is a military organization from a 20th and 21st century mindset. It certainly has military aspects, similar to how you could say NASA has military aspects in that it's connected. Strictly speaking, Starfleet is a sort of almost a paramilitary. It does have military attributes and people within it who serve that role, but it has a dual function of exploration and scientific expansion, not conquest. Now, even within the military, research and non-combat vessels are necessary. Now, during peacetime and within your own borders or territorial area, this isn't a problem. It's obvious the Oberth class, which was not a high warp ship in the 20... Third century, for example, this vessel I don't believe was capable of above warp six. It was not a fast ship. So it wasn't designed for long range missions. It was never intended to go up against the Klingon Brow class bird of prey. It didn't have soldiers on board it. It was only lightly armed. And although it did have defense shields, they were low yield, really designed to defend the vessel against minimal attack and spatial phenomena that might be of minor threat, such as 
ion storms or some kind of magnetic interference or gravitational attack or something. Whatever. The shields, though, were not with, they, this, designed to withstand a major assault and repel a determined enemy. So yeah, in a way you could say these ships were a bit of a death trap, but then there's another argument to be made. A lot of Oberth class ships are also seen in civilian use, such, such as the SS Vico. Note that SS, meaning it's not a Starfleet ship, or at least it isn't anymore. The vessel has either been sold on, or has been passed on in some way to civilian use, usually by one of Earth's colonies, as we do know that many of the more established human colonies operate their own fleets, such as fleets operating from the Vega system, even building and launching their own ships on occasion. And there are other colonies that are even more developed than that, to the point where they are able to construct and deploy fleets completely independently of Starfleet. But other colonies rely on sort of the hand-me-downs, as well as other scientific organizations which are civilian connected, but not directly run or administered by Starfleet. Many of these vessels fell into that service. Now, a lot of the time we do see these ships being destroyed, we see them being blown up, we see them running into trouble, and we see the Enterprise or some other starship having to come to their aid. But I argue, is that not what the Enterprise is for? They are there to assist such vessels. The Enterprise, or vessels like it, are designed to take on those enemies. They are the ones intended to encounter them. Starfleet only builds comparatively a handful of galaxy-class starships. Yes, it builds a lot of them, but compared to how many Oberth-class it would ultimately build, it was nothing. And there's another argument. How many galaxy-class ships were destroyed during the Dominion War? How many Constitution-class ships were destroyed before they decided to refit them? The Oberth-class may not stand up well in a fight. It may not be the most robust ship. But how many of them have actually fallen foul to it? They stay out of the way. They stay within the borders. They're the follow-up ships. If the California class are second contact, the Oberth class is somewhere in like X or Y contact. It stays well away and conducts long-term scientific observations and missions in territory that has already been secured, explored, at least passively, either by long-range scan or by a larger, more powerful ship like a Galaxy class or a Sovereign class or a Nebula class, already going there, having a look about and going, you know what, this system warrants further study. We'll call in a science vessel and that science vessel will do it. If the science vessel then runs into trouble, that Galaxy class or whatever is probably not too far away. It'll probably still be in the sector. And quite frankly, Starfleet's political power is usually enough to sway most enemies from engaging it. Yes, your average Ferengi might look at an Oberth class and go, yeah, you know what, we could destroy that ship, but why would we? What do we gain? We'll gain nothing for destroying it. The crew will resist, they won't surrender, they will fight. We may get damaged, we probably won't, but you know what we definitely, definitely will do? The Federation will know we did it. We'll lose the ability to trade with them. They may come after us. They probably will send that big, heavily armed, galaxy-class starship, which we can see at the very trailing edge of our sensors, sort of blobbing around out there, that thing's going to come barreling after us at high warp, and they're going to kick the living crap out of us. So why do we attack that ship? So sometimes having your economic weight behind you, your political power, is enough to guarantee, for the most part, the safety of your ships against most enemies. Also, the fact that the Oberth class, despite sometimes having scientifically sensitive technology on board it, such as the USS Pegasus, for example, which was a testbed for much of the technology that will be used on the Galaxy class, not to mention an illegal Federation-developed cloaking device, the ships, for the most part, didn't have such things on them. So they wouldn't be an immediate target. There was no value in there. You couldn't, there was nothing to steal. The ship itself wasn't very useful outside of a scientific context. So why would someone want to steal it? Secondly, you're going to piss off Starfleet. Starfleet's going to come after you for attacking that ship or destroying it. And Starfleet, with their advanced technology, are going to know you did it. They're going to figure it out. They're going to work out who did it. So yeah, there is an argument to be made that these vessels are weak and stupid. But there's also an argument to be made that they make perfect sense within the grander fleet of the Federation. Because you're not just talking about Starfleet. Remember, there's over 200 member races in the Federation, each one of them with their own Space Navy to some degree. Starfleet's not the only one. The Oberth class is both used by Starfleet and civilian, as well as probably other Federation member races as some form of asset. 
And the majority of the time, it's simply a science vessel. It doesn't need a lot of firepower. It doesn't need strong shields because it's not going to encounter those kinds of threats and dangers that would put it in it. And if it is, Starfleet does have a few variants which are a bit better armed and a bit better defended. Now, yes, using these vessels at Wolf 359 was absolute madness. And quite frankly, Admiral Hansen should have been, had his, if he hadn't been killed or assimilated, probably should have been slapped about the face for that decision. But you can also understand that Starfleet was desperate. We were well within Federation borders. All the bigger Galaxy class and Excelsior class and its vessels, they're out in deep space at the edges of Federation territory. As fast as they are, how quick can they get back to Wolf 359, to the Sol system, to defend that against a Borg cube? But you know what ships are blobbing about near to Earth at all times? Oberth class, Miranda class, probably California class. Ships that are not built for combat, ships that are not expected to go to war because you're so close to Earth, deep within Federation territory. Most enemies, Klingon, Romulan, Cardassian at the, maybe at the time, you're going to see them coming. They're not going to be able to get that close because the first thing they've got to get past are those big powerful ships at the edge of your territory. Borg, drop out of a transwarp conduit somewhere within Federation territory. You can't respond fast enough. Their ships are hard to detect. They know how to avoid you. Quite frankly, your defences are all out there waiting at the borders, not deep within your territory. They've basically bypassed your Maginot line. And they're right there in your territory and you've only got your auxiliaries to fight them off. It also explains the sort of usual Starfleet argument of the Enterprise is the only ship in the sector capable of intercepting Vija. Why? You're at Earth. Why is the Enterprise the only ship? Oh, wait, I know. I have, an, I have a theory. Because the Enterprise is a starship, and in Star Trek, a starship is a bit different to just a ship. The Oberth class is a ship. A starship, again, in their vernacular, is a little different. It's referencing a vessel that is not only bigger than the average vessel, but is more heavily armed and more capable, not just as a combat vessel, but as a scientific ship. Ships like the Discovery were described, the Crossfield class in general, is described as a science cruiser. It's a well-armed science vessel. It cl falls closer to the concept of starship and most starships were frontline vessels, like your Ambassador class, your Constitution class, your Galaxy class, your hero ships, basically. Whereas your, your B ships, those are not starships in that context. They are a ship that goes to the stars, yes, but they are not what Starfleet considers to be that kind of a vessel. They are an auxiliary ship. They're a training ship. They're not frontline warships, frontline cruisers, frontline defensive vessels. An Intrepid class ship is not a warship, but it is a well-armed, capable starship. And again, there is that word, and there is that concept, that description of a vessel. It's armed with heavy phasers, strong shields, photon torpedoes, maybe quantum torpedoes. The Intrepid class was even seen to be able to carry and fire tricobalt devices, much more powerful even than a quantum torpedo. Basically, you've got far more capable ships in the fleet. You can fill up the gaps with these things. You don't want to waste a Galactic-class starship spending six months inside one solar system doing solar observations and soil analysis of the various terrestrial planets and studying wind speeds on the gas giants. You want the Galactic-class out there showing the flag, showing the face of the Federation, going, look what we can build with this powerful. You go and mess with that tiny little ship back there that's behind us, those ten little Oberth class that are sort of scurrying about, hiding from you you mess with them you mess with us and we will wipe the floor with you and we've got more of these so in my opinion the oberth class does exactly what it's supposed to do it's doing the job it was intended to do which was science how many scientists do you know walk around carrying an ak-47 wearing body armor not bloody many some maybe some are crazy but not many now does starfleet get complacent in the 23rd century and misuse these ships perhaps but, for the most part, the only vessels we see are the vessels that are already in trouble. We see the Enterprise responding to ships that have already gotten into trouble out in deep space. The majority of them are plodding around quite happy. The Enterprise skips right by them, no issues. Only ships like the Vico run into problems and the Enterprise has to go and help them. We should point out that an Oberth class ship actually came to the rescue of the Enterprise-D crew when that ship was crashed. Not just the big Nebula class. So they do serve a function. So, 
Let me know in the comments below your opinion. Have I managed to dissuade you from thinking the Oberth class is just a flying coffin in space? There is a good argument for it. Because could Starfleet have made these ships better armed and better defended? Yes. But as Starfleet is not a military organization in the strictest sense as we understand it, they're not going to build every ship to be a warship. The nature of warfare from a human point of view and militarism has evolved by the 23rd and certainly by the 24th century to be different to what it is now. The same as if you were to go back in time 300 years from 2022 when I made this video, the nature of warfare was different back then. The nature of armies was different. We would consider a modern army far more evolved, more efficient and more professional than what they had and would need fewer numbers to accomplish the same job. Starfleet, you have to assume, with its advanced technology, only needs a relatively small military to accomplish the same goal as anything else. But that's a different debate, a different argument. The fact that Starfleet ship, our ships are so well armed is not just a reflection of human mentality to defend themselves, but also a reflection of their enemies. The Klingons, the Romulans in particular, where every ship, more or less, or at least a lot of them, are warships versus only a smaller number of science vessels. It's sort of the fleet's flipped on its head. Starfleet officers are also trained to be mostly scientific personnel and engineers and such things, not soldiers. Although there are the Starfleet Marines, who I am going to do a video on soon because I really would like to cover them. And they are more of a strict military within Starfleet. But we'll cover those in another video. With all that said, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, great. Let me know in the comments below your opinions on the Oberth class. I just want to take this moment to thank you for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, please check out my social links in the description box below to Instagram and Twitter and others. And also is down there a link to my Patreon page where you can support this channel and the others as I try to grow this franchise and do this more regularly. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you for watching and bye bye.